Welcome to the Debka File, a weekly roundup of exclusive news, insight, and analysis from the Middle East, broadcast to you live from the heart of the region. Coming up on the program today, the U.S. will give Israel more F-35s to face Russian S-300s. Moscow exploits IL-20 downing for upcoming actions in Syria. Russian electronic warfare can jam spy satellites. Syrian S-300 will be integrated in Russia's nuclear C-3 defenses. Iran launches first squadron of stealth drones. And now to our top headlines. Following Russia's decision to send four S-300 surface-to-air missile systems to Syria after blaming Israel for the downing of an IL-20 spy plane over Syria, U.S. President Trump has ordered that additional F-35 fighter planes be sent to Israel. This decision occurred after military officials in Washington and Jerusalem discussed the increased threat posed by the S-300s to Israeli air jets striking Iranian targets in Syria. The F-35s were taken from the U.S. Air Force's service squadrons, while the S-300s were taken from Russia's operational air defense missile stocks. Washington also notified Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and United Arab Emirates Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the decision to send an F-35 squadron to the Al Dafra Air Base just south of Abu Dhabi. Debka file military sources report that this injection of U.S. air might underline the U.S. administration's backing for Israel to continue striking Iran's military presence and arms shipments in Syria. We are very much in favor of what Israel is doing as far as their defense is concerned. Uh, they're aggressive and they have no choice but to be aggressive. It's a very difficult part of the world, so I just want to let Benjamin, let all of the people know, let Bibi know that uh, we are with you, we are with Israel 100 percent. Meanwhile, the Russian Deputy Foreign Minister, Sergei Vershinin, has given warning to Israel not to attack the Russians' S-300s, saying he hopes that, quote, Tel Aviv will exercise good judgment in the region, despite Israel's insistence on not abandoning operations in Syria and Russia's S-300 supply to Syria. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has stated that the Russian S-300 air defense system is a serious escalation. Moscow exploited the accidental downing of the Russian IL-20 planned by Syrian missiles on September 17th to install in Syria a series of game-changing Cold War-grade military measures against the U.S. and Israel. The most important was announced by Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu in Moscow on September 24th. He said that in response to Israel's role in downing the Russian IL-20, which left 15 Russians dead, Syria's air defense electronic capacities will be boosted to level that of Russian forces in the country. Russia will jam satellite navigation, onboard radars, and communication systems of combat aircrafts, which attack targets over Syrian territory and from the Mediterranean waters off Syria. Shoigu stated that Syria's unified air defense system would be running by October 20th. Приступили к выполнению ряда мероприятий, направленных на усиление систем ПВО Сирийской Арабской Республики, направленных на, в том числе или в первую очередь, на защиту наших военнослужащих. Мы завершили поставку комплексов С-300. Это включает в себя 49 единиц техники. Локаторы подсветки, естественно, основные системы определения машинного управления и четыре пусковых установки. Работа завершена сутки назад. Мы завершили поставку в Сирию всего комплекса. То, что касается единой системы управления всей сети ПВО, мы также приступили к поставкам оборудования, завершим полностью всю работу с подготовкой обучением экипажей и завязыванием в единую сеть к 20 октября. This system is to be connected not only to the Russian Khmeimim air base, but all the way to the Russian nuclear C-3 command, control and communication system, which protects Russian cities and its military. Elements of this C-3 system are to be transferred to Syria and installed with the S-300 at the T-4 air base.
What this means is that the S-300s being delivered to Syria are assigned a broad strategic role in Putin's long-term agenda with major repercussions. Russia has never transferred any part of the C-3 outside its own territory. Sending C-3 elements to Syria brings a third advanced system to the Middle East after the U.S. and Israel. Using the TS military airbase gives the Russian army an edge geographically over the U.S. forces in eastern and northern Syria and western Iran. This could indicate that Russians are preparing to go against the U.S. military east of the Euphrates River. The advanced communication system in eastern Syria may also be made available to Iran's operations over Syria and Iraq. Russia may, in short, be preparing for a showdown in Syria against the U.S. and Israel. The T-4 airbase could also be a platform to promote weapon sales to world markets. Over 200 new weapons developed by the Russians were used in the Syrian war, and Moscow could deploy new cruise missiles at T-4. Soon after the downing of the IL-20 plane, Putin initially indicated to Netanyahu that he would hold off on delivering the S-300 air defense system to Syria until they met and spoke about the matter thoroughly. Meanwhile, an American spy plane, which tracks enemy communications and has a workstation connected to the Army Intelligence Data Network, reported that Iranian and Syrian air forces were pulling out of Syria's largest air base located west of Palmyra. As a result, Trump and Netanyahu were encouraged to believe that the crisis would soon be over. Netanyahu had this to say at his weekly cabinet meeting. However, Debka intelligence sources reveal that while Russian Air Force units moved out of T-4, a Russian Air Force engineering unit moved in, and it was converting the Syrian town of TS into a fully equipped Russian and Syrian Air Defense Command Center equipped for the intake of Russian S-300 air defense batteries. The Russian Krasuka 4 mobile electronic warfare system has made its foreign debut in Syria and was unloaded at the Russian Khmeimim Air Base near Latakia. This took place just one day after Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu ordered systems for jamming satellite navigation and the onboard radars and communication systems of combat aircraft attacking Syria in order to punish Israel for its alleged role in Syria's accidental downing of the Russian plane. The Krasuka 4 is a highly advanced system which can disable guided missiles and aircraft and can neutralize low Earth orbit spy satellites and radars up to 300 kilometers, which covers northern and central Israel. The IDF knows the strength of the Krasuka 4, but has never had to face it in action. Depka file sources reveal that Putin is turning up the heat in Syria to force nothing less than the complete withdrawal of U.S. troops from the country. President Trump is not expected to surrender. Debka sources report that in addition to Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu saying that the unified S-300 air defense systems will be installed in Syria, Putin is taking advantage of the chain of events to establish an advanced air defense weapon system in Syria linked to both the Russian Khmeimim Air Base in Latakia and Russia's C-3 Command Control and Communication System. Putin laid out his goals for Syria in an energy forum on October 3rd. Что, на мой взгляд, можно сделать и к чему мы все должны стремиться? Мы должны стремиться к тому, чтобы вообще никаких войск иностранных третьих государств на территории Сирии не было. Вот к этому нужно и двигаться. This move changes American and Israeli operations in Syria as they're facing their first direct contest with the air defense system, which defends Russian cities. Shoigu offered details on the S-300s delivered to Syria and mentioned 40 units of radars, basic target acquisition systems, command posts, and four launchers. However, he did not reveal how the Syrian and Russian air defense networks were connected to the command and control center in Russia or how they would function together. Moscow has therefore raised the stakes of the military contest between Russia and the U.S. in Syria. Putin aims to test Russia's air defense capabilities against the U.S. Air Force's F-22 stealth plane and Israel's F-35 plane to find out who has greater power in the battlefield. 
The terrorist attack on a military parade in Avaz on September 22nd, which left 30 dead, including many members of the Revolutionary Guards Corps, gave Tehran an opportunity to elevate its military operations in Syria from the ground to the air. On October 2nd, the Guards sent their first squadron of advanced stealth UAVs into action over Syria after a barrage of surface missiles. At the U.S. General Assembly, Trump criticized Iran and said they do not respect their neighbors or borders or the sovereign rights of nations. At the same time, Tehran saw the U.S. retreat from the region when U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis announced that he would transfer the four Patriot missile defense systems from Jordan, Kuwait and Bahrain to face Russia and China. Iran also took advantage of the absence of any U.S. aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf since March and Israel's suspension of aerial operations against Iranian targets in Syria since the IL-20 incident on September 17th. Iran and the Revolutionary Guards Corps are using this event to plant markers across the region. Most significantly, the Guards sent their barrage of ballistic missiles and stealth UAVs into eastern Syria from Iranian soil through Iraqi airspace. They claimed that ISIS was being punished for staging a terror attack. However, this was only a front, as Iran was aware that it was not the Islamic State who caused the attack, but the separatist group known as the Arab Struggle Movement for the Liberation of Avaz, supported by United Arab Emirates intelligence. Iran used two kinds of ballistic missiles, an Iranian-upgraded Qiyam SRBM with guided warhead and a new type Fateh-110 SRBM the Fateh Mobin, which is more accurate than previous versions and has better stealth features for countering ballistic missile defenses. These missiles shot across the width of Iraq and exploded when landing in eastern Syria. The Iranian regime succeeded in fighting the U.S. and Israel over Syria from its own home base. Iran presented its first stealth UAV squadron called Thunderbolt. It's a replica of the U.S. RQ-170 Sentinel spy drone, which the Iranians downed in 2011 and replicated with the help of China by a process called reverse engineering. These drones are capable of dropping Sadid 345 miniature precision-guided glide bombs on their targets, some from an internal bomb bay. This came as a surprise to Western intelligence sources, which had not known the Iranians had caught up with internal Bombay technology for its stealth drones. Western governments were forced to accept that Iran had come up with a dangerous combat arm of highly advanced stealth drones. Only time will tell whether Moscow will allow Tehran to use the extension of the Russian C-3 system, which was just installed in Syria. Israel and the U.S. have not countered Iran's new air capability in Syria. On September 29th, the U.S. administration also failed to respond to gun and rocket fire attacks on the U.S. consulate in southern Iraq by a local Shia militia overseen by Iran. The facility was shut down and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo warned the Iranian-backed militias that for incidents of fire, the U.S. would respond appropriately. He blamed Iran and the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Quds Force under the control of Qasem Soleimani. With us to discuss these issues is Dr. Zev Levin, head of the Euro-Asian Research Department at the Truman Institute of the Hebrew University. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. So the dynamics are rapidly changing in the Middle East since the downing of the Russian plane. Uh, how do you think the U.S. and Israel will respond uh, to this new direction that Putin has taken? Well, uh, if we forecast uh, to the future, we can see that uh, the developments are uh, not that clear in one head. Uh, and we can see that uh, Russia were very uh, stiff, uh, took a very stiff position toward Israel about uh, the downing of their plane and their teams and the free hand that Israel actually had uh, operating in the uh, over Syrian uh, air and uh, making uh, various uh, strikes uh, on various targets in Syria. But on the other hand, uh, there are quite a lot of mutual interests uh, between Israel and uh, Russia uh, not escal to escalating the, the conflict uh, and uh, keeping it, uh, the fires uh, low. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is a frequent guest uh, in, in Moscow and various other le leaders of uh, his government uh, visiting in Moscow regularly and uh, open, having uh, open channels and we have uh, also a uh, military cooperation uh, with uh, the Russian military forces in Syria. Uh, here again, if even uh, 
during the, the last incident, there was a, no one has said that there was no coordination between uh, the Russians and the Israelis. The Russians uh, say that uh, the coordination wasn't, uh, didn't give in more, enough time for Russians to, uh, to engage or to, to, to took their aircraft out of the, uh, the, the missile uh, area. So I think that uh, uh, the forthcoming uh, visit of uh, Netanyahu to Moscow will try to make uh, newer uh, agreements or in uh, newer understanding uh, in, bo in both uh, uh, benefits of, of the countries that uh, Russia will show itself as controlling totally the, the situation, not uh, giving uh, Israel a free hand. And on the other hand, will uh, keep uh, that, uh, as, at least in some way, the situation that uh, Israel wouldn't have to attack. And uh, I, I assume that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu will uh, show uh, the red lines once again uh, that Israel can or cannot uh, bypass, especially about the Iranian pre presence in Syria. Do you think Netanyahu will get Putin to amend his new strategy in, in Syria when they meet? Uh, I think that uh, he has a, a very good chance. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Russia showed uh, its muscle and brought a new uh, anti-aircraft system, the S-300, into the, the region. Uh, I think that uh, what uh, they are now interested in is that uh, Israel wouldn't strike or will be forced to strike against their systems. And uh, if they will, uh, they will show that the incapability of the new systems or test them uh, real on ground. And this is uh, what uh, Russia and Israel, I think, are not interested in. Now what they are probably much interested in, it will be resolving the issues in a more diplomatic way. How much do the new S-300s and electronic warfare measures restrict Israel's F-35 operations in Syria? Well, we'll never know until a shown on ground or something will happen and Israel will, will be forced to attack or will attack on Syrian ground in spite of their presence and then we can see what they can or cannot do. There was a Quite some problems with the with those uh, systems. First of all, we don't know what specification uh, Russia provided to the, the Syrians. Uh, S three hundred is supposed to be more recent and more advanced system, but uh, it's also not uh, that uh, uh, that uh, young. It it was developed in the late eighties, uh, uh, so uh, there are al already a modification of S S four hundred and even S five hundred that are developed in Russia, so these uh, systems are not that new. Uh, although uh, those systems apparently were sold uh, to U.S. Uh, in the early 90s. So, so I, I guess uh, the, the U.S. government uh, authorities, while building the F-35, tested them or tried them to see how they react and interact. Uh, with uh, the newer uh, plans. Uh, so, I, again, I, I, I'm not an intelligence man, so I can't say, say and uh, I think that uh, even the army personnel uh, will have some problems uh, saying uh, what actually will, uh, will go. On ground, uh, till, till recently, uh, Israeli Air Force had no problems acting on ground and uh, on, uh, on the air against the, the S-200. How it will develop against the newer system, only time will show. That's Dr. Zev Levin. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your insight. Thank you. And now for a roundup of this week's regional stories you may have missed, the news in brief. There are rumors that Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman could be on the way out, as he's been missing in action the past few weeks and suddenly reappeared on Sunday during a three-day visit to Kuwait. Prior to the visit, the Crown Prince spoke to U.S. President Trump about four key areas, soaring oil prices, the quarrel with Qatar, the standoff in the Yemen war, and patriots moving out of the Middle East. Sources suggest that King Salman could replace the Crown Prince with one of his brothers. This could be bad news for Trump and Netanyahu, who regard him as a close ally and a major player in their Middle East policies. It would also give a boost to Iran, who regards him as one of their greatest enemies in the region.
The appointments of moderate Iraqi Kurdish statesman Baram Saleh as Iraq's new president and Iraqi Shiite politician Adil Abdul Mahdi as prime minister are a result of a top secret cooperation between the U.S. and Iran for their first joint bid to solve a serious Middle East issue. Since the May elections, Iraq has not had a central government in Baghdad. Debka sources say that the cooperation between the administrations of U.S. President Trump and Iranian President Hassan Rouhani moved ahead despite ongoing harsh rhetoric between the two sides. This includes the speech on October 3rd made by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who announced the end of the 1955 treaty with Iran after an international court issued a ruling based on that treaty. Pompeo stated that, quote, given Iran's history of terrorism, ballistic missile activity and other malign actions, its claims under the treaty are absurd. National Security Advisor John Bolton commented on Mike Pompeo's speech at a press conference. Earlier today, Secretary of State Pompeo made a very important announcement regarding the president's decision to terminate the 1955 Treaty of Amity with Iran, a treaty Iran made a mockery of with its support for terrorism, provocative ballistic missile proliferation, and malign behavior throughout the Middle East. Today's decision by the International Court of Justice was a defeat for Iran. It correctly rejected nearly all of Iran's requests, but we are disappointed that the ICJ failed to recognize that it has no jurisdiction to issue any order with respect to sanctions the United States imposes to protect its own essential security under the treaty. However, despite these talks by U.S. officials castigating Iran for its recent actions, the secret U.S.-Iranian talks on a coalition government in Baghdad went ahead. Two candidates in the running for interior minister are former Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki and pro-Iranian militia leader Hadi al-Amiri.